great to be with you guys again. Really appreciate it. And thanks for having me about the scholarship program. Absolutely. I'm going to get to the, the Doug Widmeyer scholarship program in a second. I want to continue the conversation we were having during the break okay. about, uh, if you don't mind here, Hawaii, mm -hmm. for instance. And yeah. uh, I know you had mentioned before, and we talked to you previously about your, your work on the ground at uh, uh, Ground Zero, 9-11 and uh, the similarities and differences yeah. between trying to recover uh, victims of these fires yeah. from what happened to Ground Zero to what's going on in Hawaii, where we have, what, a thousand missing? Ish, yeah. A thousand ish missing, which at this point, John, as a person who's been involved in recovery situations, obviously it looks doubtful. I, at this point, you, know, you, always, you always hope for the best, but you, at this point it's time to plan for the worst, I think. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's a, it's a terrible, um, situation obviously it's terrible for the families it's terrible for everybody that, that's involved but you know my heart as as an emergency responder in the past man those those folks are going to need some help too and 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 it's very similar um before i moved here from california uh, if you remember the paradise fires in california mm -hmm. um they said that stuff came roaring through the temperatures were uh i mean the wind blew that it was like a ball flame they found remains and uh, people in their doorway literally trying to get out and just were incinerated and um i mean there was a, over a hundred some plus people just immediately incinerated in paradise and that was about an hour from where i lived our church went up there did recovery and stuff like that and you just it's you just you walk up there and you're just helpless i mean you're just looking around and it's just it's, it's hard to yeah. comprehend that yeah. the, the fires of this intensity actually create their own weather system. Oh, yeah. So you've got superheated, I mean superheated yeah. hurricane force winds that come blowing through. And it, it, it's it, it's like something from, you know, the, the Terminator. Yeah, uh, the movies. Yeah, yeah the yeah. movies were just yeah. it, it sweeps through with unimaginable speed. And people always think they have, oh, I have time, I have this, I have that, and it, they don't. And it I sucks mean, all the oxygen out of the air, too, because yeah, it's and, all burning up. And, I mean, they found remains in cars and people's driveway. I mean, people got in their car to get, and they just incinerated. And it, it's just it, it's amazing if you ever seen a fire, and I did in California, jump from across a river. I mean, literally go from one side of the river to the other side. And the river's pretty pretty wide i mean just to jump and the wind just took it like picked it up and just dropped it on the other side and boom the other side just lit up i mean it's it, you, you i mean living in california for 15 years you would drive down the road and there'd be the hillside would be on fire and literally you'd be driving in the, in the side of the mountains on fire and you're driving through this stuff it's an it, it becomes almost normal which is dangerous because then when a real uh, dangerous situation comes people they don't move as fast and it and it's just like there and i mean i i can't even imagine i, I have reports of friends and, and and rescue relief efforts and they're just dumbfounded they're going into these communities and there's nothing i mean there's nothing there's not remains there's nothing and you're mentioning you know over a thousand missing um it's going to be like 9 11 that they're it's going to come to the point to where they're going to be deceased and that's that's a terrible thing I was listening on the news this morning. They were saying how of the disasters, uh, this one in Hawaii has had the least participation from family members yeah. donating DNA to be able to identify the victims of these fires. I don't know the, what the reason is for that, but it is obviously complicating identification uh, issues. Well, for some of those family members, they're they're part of the missing. And so it's hard to, to bring that, that stuff to you when you're part of the missing. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, it just destroyed, incinerated communities. And, uh, and, you, and you, before you moved here, you were in California, uh -huh. Tim, doing your work. And California, obviously, we know from the wildfires, but now also because of a hurricane, mudslides and floods and all sorts yeah. of damage. Yeah, I, I have a daughter and son-in-law down there in the San Diego area and, and mudslides, and I have friends down in that area. The, uh, the mudslides, and, and uh, one of them lost half their house. They didn't lose no injury to themselves, but half the house floated down the road um i mean again the and, and they have insurance and that will get all covered and everything but it's it's devastating because when the rains come in because of the fires there's no vegetation to hold anything in place so that that it, it, it it's just like sand it just shifts and boy when it shifts it you see the the the, the things on t it comes down and it comes down in massive amounts and that uh, you know, you saw those firemen running. Mm -hmm. I mean, because that stuff is like a steamroller running over you. You can't stand there like in the movies and let the thing hit you and it's going to go around you. No, it's going to it's going to take you down and 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 
and smash you. And so it, it all these things, uh, you know, uh, it, it's just nature doing what they mm-hmm. do. Um, and I and I know people want to get into all kinds of other debates on it, but I, I've been around the world. I've seen a lot of disasters, and um, it's a shame uh, that this thing that this stuff happens. Um, we, I would hope we would learn from some things that we have better responses and maybe save uh, more lives next time around. Um, but when them winds pick up, there's not a whole lot you can do. I mean, I've been in those situations. The, the winds pick up, and like you said, it, they create a whole atmosphere in itself. Well, I've seen pictures from Lahaina of the um, engine companies, the, the, the fire trucks yeah. that are burned down to the axles. Yeah. And these guys do not park their fire trucks in the middle of a fire. Mm-mm. So that had to come. Yeah. In a, in a big hurry for yeah. and I hope they all got away and the same in paradise when paradise burned and, and it, it was just they said it was just like an inferno coming at you and it they just left everything and went and ran and and them trucks were burned down I mean these are huge fire trucks they yeah. they it's like they shrunk <laughs> and it, it's 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 a uh, it's a terrible thing to see and it's a terrible thing it's an eerie feeling when you walk uh, onto that kind of environment after that kind of disaster the eerie feeling of the helplessness the hopelessness, and also the frailty of life, how quick things can change just like that. And it just makes you think some of things a little different. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, there's questions about the the whistle, the alarm in Hawaii, and the yeah. director who resigned or, or what left because of health, quote-unquote health reasons mentioned the fact that he, the whistle is typically resolved, resolved uh, for tsunamis, uh, hurricanes, whatever, uh, he was afraid if he sounded the whistle that the training is such that people would have run into the fire, uh, which seems illogical to most people who hear that. Uh, instead, the choice was to allow silence, and a lot of these people were incinerated in their sleep. John, you've got a master's in safety engineering and such. Any validity to what the guy was saying? People respond. People who are trained respond to their training in the event of an emergency. And if you are trained, for example... Um, around, well, not so much around here, but if you go a little farther west down to the plains, if you hear that siren at night, that's a tornado siren, and that means you go down into your basement. Mm-hmm. And if there's a fire coming at you, that's not where you want to be, yeah. right? So if I don't, I don't pretend to understand how, how the system worked in Hawaii, but if, in fact, the siren would indicate that people do exactly the wrong thing, not sounding the siren makes... It makes the most sense. I mean, it's a terrible decision that, that has to be made because clearly this was not something that anybody had planned for. And in all fairness, as somebody who has planned these sort of things for communities, I don't, I, I don't know that you, this is the one-off that I'm not sure you can plan for. Yeah. It, the worst possible, all, all of the factors lined up against these poor people. Yeah. And, um, I, I, you know, it's the, when, when your best option is to go into the ocean, yeah. what is the next step? Yeah. You know, that now that's it's just it, it's a nightmare. I, I can't put myself there. But in terms of the emergency responder, the, the guy who who um, he's under a lot of pressure and I'm sure it's his community. I mean, it just has to feel terrible. So he resigned and and that's OK. But in terms of judging somebody for not making noise when the noise might have caused the wrong reaction, I have a hard time coming down on him for that. Tim, let's get to the uh, Doug Widmeyer scholarship, if we could, here yes. now, and uh, discuss what the options are here. Yeah, the good news is uh, one of the things we, we, we do at the Martinsburg, I've been praying about for a long time, and uh, Doug Widmeyer, good friend of the mission, good friend of mine, uh, good friend of this show here. Mm-hmm. Doug, uh, just a great guy. Um, when he passed away, his son Scott uh, came to me and wanted to leave a legacy and uh, left a legacy of a scholarship fund uh, for the mission. And so for anybody that comes through our programs, uh, men, women, and children, since now we're going to have the Hope House open up here in um, Berkeley Springs in November, and then uh, the Haven House, the 604 Project is going to open up November 1st, so we'll have men, women, and children. Um, anybody's come through our programs, and we've already had some people already, men and, and women, who've come through our programs who have taken advantage of the scholarship program. Basically, we have a, a, set, a, a certain set amount of money that was given to us by uh, Scott Winmeyer on behalf of his dad, Doug, and it sits in a fund, and then the interest we use for scholarship money. Um, and we've been able to bless a lot of, of our folks so far this year. And you guys had a great discussion the other day. I, I don't get to hear it a lot because I'm, I'm, I'm always – doing a bunch of stuff mm-hmm. um but i got i played back um 
when Damian Wright was on and you guys were on, and I think you were, you were here. I don't know if you were here that day, but you were here. And uh, one of the neat things you guys were talking about um, was schooling. And, and I want to give Damian Wright a shout out of credit. He spoke up about the discipline situation and you had a good suggestion about reward and stuff like that. Oh. And, and I, I want to give him a shout out for his courage of speaking out and saying, you know, there is these problems and, I'd rather have him do what he's doing, speak about him, than cover him up. Because we deal with people with behavioral issues. I've been doing this for 40 years. Some people would say I'm an expert in behavioral uh, stuff, and I, I, I deal with a lot of people. I can tell when people are BSing me and lying to me and all that kind of stuff. But the neat thing is we. one thing I learned years ago is to reward people, and you brought that up. And that's the reason why I'm getting here is to reward people. And... I learned a long time ago, especially with people that I work with, because they come from bad backgrounds and they've been beaten down and they've been put down and they're, they come from a negative perspective. When you start rewarding them and giving them goals to go after, little goals, little by little by little, you see them light up, you see them gain hope, you see them get off of the dope, you see them uh, start reaching out and doing stuff. And for a lot of our people, um, it would be nice that if they'd go to WVU or Marshall, and you guys ta had another segment on about the education system, which mm -hmm. was really great, because a lot of our guys are going to the tech schools because they they want to you know they're at a certain age and gals where they want to get they want to go to get certified and get out there and work right away. They don't want to have to go four years, six years, come out with a thousand hundred thousand dollar deficit. And, sure. and then try to get a job. So Blue Ridge um, and James Rumsey has been such a blessing to our f population. And of course, now when we have children come through, they might be the ones that go to Shepherd and WVU and, 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 and Marshall. But it's neat how WVU and Marshall now are all of a sudden doing the AI and all this other stuff. Because growing up as a kid in the Lehigh Valley in Pennsylvania, they had the Lehigh Valley tech schools for uh, high school. And then, um, you know, because a lot of kids I grew up with they didn't, especially the guys, if it wasn't for tech school, they would have flunked out of high school. They'd have never went on to college. Um, my brother, uh, my oldest brother um, did tech school and then went two years to Ferris State. Uh, at that time, it was Ferris State University, two-year school. Did uh, um, nuclear engineering, came out and worked on Nine Mile Island. Made a ton of money, mm -hmm. two years. And they'd come out with no deficit he came out just as Nine Mile Island was happening, and they said... Uh, you mean Three Mile Island? Three Mile Island, yeah, yeah I'm mile. sorry. Three Mile Island. And he, and, yeah, I'm it's sorry. the one that's six miles down the road. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry. And, and, and they, he was young, and he said the crew, and they went out there, and he made a ton of money, but he did a two-year degree type situation, sure. tech thing. And you know a lot of guys our age, they went to tech schools, and they came out, and they did very well, and are doing very well. And so our guys get to do this, and... Through this scholarship that Doug has set up, it's really it's, it's exciting. And so we're now, that's going to come out in our next newsletter. What I sent you is our newsletter for September. And we're asking people to contribute to the principal so the principal can be built up. So we have more interest to give out to more scholarships to those coming through our program because we're getting more and more of our young people. We have one, a guy right now, he's signing up. His name's Josh. He's signing up for the web design, the AI class that's being held at Blue Ridge. These are the neat things that these guys are going to then can go out and get a good job um, and, and a very, <laughs> very high tech job and also benefit the mission, but also benefit a company going down the road and then benefit them. So we're taking them from, you know, uh, uh, from dope with no hope to hope with a, with, a, with a degree or a certification in something that is desperately needed, you know, and especially competing in the compute computer field, which, you know, worldwide we're not doing too well in and so it's neat that we got blue ridge and james rumsey right here right here in martinsburg that and i and i hope the classes don't get too expensive that we're able to send folks there and and help them with scholarship and proceed and do well we've got guys forklift certified we got guys uh, I can't remember all the different things that's in the article that I wrote. I can't remember because I'm already in my October. Article. I know how that works. Yeah, <laughs> I'm already on my, my, my I'm already in my October article. But there's there's so many neat things, and and I, and I'll tell you, um, Doug. I was hoping Bill would be here because I was gonna have him write me a check. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he can still do that. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's 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 so neat that the I'm I'm listening to your guys' discussion on edu education. And, and they're, you're hitting it right on the nail. And I think yesterday's discussion, mm -hmm. I didn't know that they do send 
high school students to like James Rumsey and stuff, which I think is awesome. I d wish we could do more of that here in this area. Um, because well, the, yeah, the, Jefferson the, County has to send their students to James Rumsey. Yeah, because the so tech, that's a big obstacle for a lot of them. Yeah, but but the tech schools for a lot of the young people, you know, because not everybody's going to go to college. And as you guys stated on your program, the college uh, registrations are dropping, and people are looking for that two-year certification. Get out there, get a job, get a good job, get a trade, that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I hope we can do more of that, not just at the high school level, but also at the level that I deal with. Because most of my folks ain't going to go to a four-year college because they just don't have the – they want to get out and get a job and become independent and contribute again. And we've had a lot of folks that have done that, especially through the forklift stuff. They've gone out and got real good jobs and real good pay and a couple other stuff uh, that they're doing. So we're excited. Um, Doug Winmeyer has – what a blessing this guy was. He was a hard worker, blue collar guy. Didn't didn't ha didn't go to college. I mean that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean him and his two brothers owned half of Martinsburg at one time. Worked their tails off. And uh, Bob's still out there. Cat, uh, Bob's cash and carry still out there. What's he like? A hundred years old now. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bob's a good guy. Bob, I, I love you. He's a good guy. <laughs> but I, but I mean it, it it's that kind. And and I think the win. I think Doug and his wife have a scholarship at WVU for nurses. You know, so uh, Doug was always that kind of guy lifting people up. Even though he himself didn't have that opportunity, he's making sure others get that opportunity and lifting people up. Um, it just, it, I, I just think you can't do enough of that. Um, I, I mean, me personally, I just think you can't do enough of that. And we, you, you know me, Rob, at the mission, if I tell you I'm going to do something, we're going to do it. And I, I'm a doer. A lot of people sit around and pontificate. I do it. Um, but I think it's neat of the discussions you're having about the educational system. And Damien, keep be, take the courage and continue to stress about the bad behavior because, like you were saying, we need to correct it, not hide it. We need to correct it. And we need to do it with rewarding because I know 10, 15 years ago when I changed my mindset of punishment and rewarding, it flipped a lot of people. And I work with a lot of folks that are some – some very difficult past, criminal past. So flipping that mindset and rewarding them has changed them into different people and very productive people. And, and if you missed the interview with uh, uh, Damon Wright from the Berkeley County uh, Board of Education, his point was that we need to report the numbers in the schools and to get a good handle on what the actual stats are because a lot of the school districts around the state are not accurately reporting those numbers for fear of the school they taking over money. the school system right. well, it was the money yeah it all comes down to money it was the reward system for the schools yeah it which... all comes down to the money but john made a good point why when we flip that and start rewarding some of these students i know i in california and in when i was in alabama i was called into public school in california and a public school in alabama that was facing severe gang issues and they brought me in to consult with the schools and people like you're talking about and when I flipped it and I said well give me these gang members for a week let me just meet with them for a week let me talk to them for a week and we did that and we flipped it with the perspective of I sat there and said what do you guys want to be and then what are some little steps to get there we and I do the same thing at the mission we sit them down and say where do you want to be a year from now where do you want to be three years from now where do you want to be five years from now okay let's let's take the steps to get you a year from now here I mean it's amazing how when you start doing that and people see that you're investing in them and rewarding them for good behavior, they start doing that. They really do. But when you, but when you, but, but if it's kind and, and there are, and there, and there's kids that are bad kids and they're going to be bad kids. That's why you need prisons. But there's also boys are just boys. Let's mm -hmm. be honest. I mean, I was a kid, I was all over the walls, the ceilings, all that kind of stuff. I mean, my teachers couldn't keep me you know, and they said, well, we're going to put you in sports. That's the only thing that saved me, or I would have. <laughs> been a, but a lot of my friends went to Votech, and I, I honestly was jealous because, man, they had a blast. They'd come back and say, we built this for the day. We did this for the day. I'm like, this sucks. I'm sitting here reading Scope magazine and, and, and bouncing off the walls, and I'm like, this, can I get in there? Well, no, because you're bad. <laughs> Does anybody in this room have trouble believing that Tim Garino was hard to control in a classroom? <laughs> he seems like a very muted, subdued I know, personality. I know, kind of laid back. But, but I, I just want to thank you guys for, for doing and, and – 
you know, those are some tough subjects to talk about because not everybody wants to admit like the numbers and you're talking about. But I, but I think you guys, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, rewards, solutions. Let's report it. Let's let, let's report it as Damien was saying, and I'm not quoting him, but I, but as he was saying is, okay, here's the problem. Now let's come up with solutions to solve it. Not here's the problem. We're terrible, and let's throw everybody away. Let's solve the problem. And with the with, with Doug Winmeyer when he. Uh, before he passed away, he came to me and said, Tim, if you had a scholarship for the mission, what would you do with it? And I said, I would take every one of the people that come in here and give them a chance to either go to Votex School or James Rumsey or Blue, or Blue Ridge or online or something or some side of certification to take them to the next level. Safe serve. We've helped a lot of uh, men get safe serve certification. Now they're hired by restaurants because if they walk and say, I have a safe serve certification, which is about a $500 yeah. certification you have to pay for. The restaurant says, really? Okay, you're hired. Because <laughs> now they don't have to pay $500 for a safe serve certification, which means a lot with the health department. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it, all these little certifications mean job, mean more money, more means I get, I get hired, I get a good job. And all these other certifications we've helped people get, um, it, it's, it's getting them jobs, it's getting them courage, it's getting them confidence, it's giving them hope. And they can then get jobs that they can make a living off of and, and go forward and leave the mission and be successful and then contribute back to society. And that's what it's all about. And Doug Winmeyer, Scott Winmeyer, they made this happen. Bill, you got to send me that check. Scott said you need to write me a check. <laughs> so it, what we want to do is build up that money that we got, the principal, so we can have more interest to distribute every year. Well, how much are you giving out currently? Are you able to give out? We, we, this year, we've given out seventeen hundred. We'll probably do another twenty six hundred before the year ends. So you got about four thousand, mm -hmm. a little bit more that's per year to give to out. give out. Wow, that's that's really good. Yes, it is, and we'd like to have a. a, a that's but I deal with a large population. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I got sixty men. Now I'm going to have nine women in in Berkeley Springs and and six families. That so we're going to have children and uh, so we're going to have the whole gamut from children to adults can benefit from this scholarship and again you have to come to one of our programs um john you can't you're, you're eliminated you can't show up they're getting up for the book stuff <laughs> but not but i'm just uh, but the neat thing is what what is because we we got this scholarship about a year or so ago and we let it build and then we started distributing it and now we're coming out publicly and saying, look, if you can contribute five, ten dollars, whatever, to the principal, it goes to the principal, then we gain that interest and that's more we can give out to and, those. And Tim, where do we go to make the donations? Martinburg Union Rescue Mission dot org and hit the donate button, put the Doug Winmeyer uh, educational fund, or you can give me a check or you can give me cash and just let me know it's for the Doug Winmeyer educational fund. Uh, Bill, you know my number. See you, see you soon. <laughs> but um, I, I just want to appreciate you guys uh, for all you did because those discussions are so important. Please don't keep up the good work. Keep up the discussions, the solutions, the rewarding. Damien, good job, even though you're a Dallas Cowboy fan. God bless you. <laughs> God will forgive you for that. But, uh, you know, I, I thank you so much. God bless you guys. Tim, thank you. Yeah. Pastor Tim Greeno from the Rescue Mission, and we break – 